Welcome back to Teaching Methods. Over here we're going to discuss one of the most popular teaching methods that's been used recently in the 21st century and even before that. So this is called the TPR method. It stands for Total Physical Response. So let's have a look at the definition of this teaching method. So let's just look at a brief history of the total physical response method and why it's so popular. Total physical response is a teaching method revolving around the coordination of speech and student action, meaning actions like gestures, body movements, facial expressions, etc. are used to get the message of the language across to the students. Its foundation is teaching and learning through physical action, utilizing your students' motor skills while they respond to commands as quickly as possible. So like showing them come here, the difference between left and right, yes and no, happy and sad. This is all a part of the TPR method. So what are some of the benefits of the TPR method? Firstly, it engages younger learners. Most important method in online teaching because your physical presence isn't felt as it is in, an, in a classroom-based situation. You have to sort of gesture for the students when they don't understand. Like yes, no, again, right? Happy, how are you? Are you happy today, right? It helps teachers communicate with beginner students if they don't understand instructions. Draw a circle around the verb, right? Using the TPR method, you're explaining the instruction to them. It improves comprehension because their memory will be better once they've seen this gesture of circling or yes, happy. It improves listening skills and it boosts learner engagement. When you look at the younger learners, they love being active, jumping around, right? So when, when you're in a classroom and you're teaching them verbs, for example, jumping, right? You can do this when you want to teach them an online teaching or flying, right? It engages them, it, it makes them kind of think a little bit about this while having fun as well. So let's look into TPR and comprehension. At the core of TPR is the desire to help students to better understand what you are teaching them. TPR is less about pronunciation, correct pronunciation and spelling, but more about comprehending the meaning of the different vocabulary words. True comprehension of what a word means acts as a great educational foundation before you get into the more technical side of newer vocabulary, more complex vocabulary and grammar structures. Thanks to the benefits of TPR, this concept is a great tool for helping young students to learn English faster. Okay, TPR and engagement. This is quite an effective teaching method used for engaging students both online and in the classroom, right? Those younger learners especially, they have short attention spans and you want to grab their attention by using a physical movement or a gesture that they can mimic after you, right? TPR demands students to pay close attention to the teacher, so they're going to look at what you're doing, okay? Love, like, dislike. This, this engages the student, it gets their attention, right? You can engage kids in the lesson more effectively by having them act out language through activity. So get them to mimic you, love, and then they have to do it. Like, then they have to do it, right? Smile. When learning a new language, memorization is essential and TPR's repetitive movements support precisely that idea. Okay, so 
When using TPR, the teachers tend to repeat these gestures more than once, about three times, that's a perfect amount, right? So this also helps younger students to memorize the words. So here are some popular examples that you can use when you're doing, doing your online teaching demo. They will like it a lot and it will get you some points, trust me. So speaking, see, I sometimes do this as well, look or see, hear or listen, write, talk, think. There's a variety of these gestures that you can use, especially while teaching younger learners. And I would suggest using it quite often when you're teaching them online. So next up, we're gonna look at the different materials that you can use when you're using the TPR method to teach. So here are some examples of popular teaching materials. The first one, of course, being songs and videos on the computer, especially when you're teaching younger students. Flashcards, again, always remains a popular and effective one. The whiteboard, utilizing the whiteboard, and puppets. That's one I haven't mentioned before. It used to be very popular to use a hand puppet when teaching younger students online, but I've seen now that it's become less and less popular. I'm not sure why that is, Maybe some teachers still do that. And props, like I show you, showed you guys that hat uh, in a previous lesson, right? Funny hats, or if you have color, different color balls, you can teach the different colors like that, or building blocks even. If you have fake fruit, artificial fruit, anything like that, you can use that in your online teaching. You can use it in your classroom. Usually it is available in most kindergarten classrooms. So let's have a look at our first one, songs and videos. TPR is often used to teach, to teach kindergartners. YouTube videos are very popular. Singing and mimicking and dancing while you are playing these videos for them. Materials like computer or TV recorded songs singing and mimicking the teacher's body movement so if you can only play the song and you can do the actual movements of the song like that song about head and shoulders knees and toes right if you can do that by yourself you don't need the youtube video right but it does make it more interactive materials like your phone speaker and audio player can also be used to play songs and videos during your lesson so here's an example of a YouTube video that's extremely popular at Asian schools in the kindergarten phase and they use it online as well. It's called Head and Shoulders, Knees and Toes, the one I just mentioned. So you're going to play it on the big screen in your classroom or what you can do is you can share your screen if you're teaching online and you can play the song for them as well, right? So that's another way to do that if you're teaching online. And then of course, you can still do head and shoulders. Might be difficult to do knees and toes if you're sitting down, but they'll get it. So here's the song. You can look it up on YouTube. I'm sure that you are familiar with it though. Okay, second one, flashcards. I've shown you my flashcards that I always keep with me as well. You can use them a lot. If you don't have flashcards, what you can do is look it up online. There are some websites. Uh, I'll show you guys a bit about that later as well in the section of free resources where you can download or make your own flashcards and print them out. So you can also do something like that. Now there's a variety of activities that you can do with your flashcards, like you can play games with your flashcards, right? Let's look at a few here often used in ESL classroom to teach vocabulary. Printed flashcards, Simon says activity. You don't need anything for that, right? The next one also run and read activity. I've explained that to you guys before. Charades, very good one to use as well, where one student is gonna gesture or 
They can also draw a picture what I would suggest using the TBR method they have to explain. You can use verbs or hobbies like fishing, right? And then the other students have to guess. So you can do that as well. Organize the flashcards like numbers or the alphabet, put them into the correct order and mimic the flashcards, especially if it's emotions, right? And there's a happy phase on the flashcard. They can mimic this or sad, angry, etc. Here's an example of that one. Say you're teaching emotions, right? You can use emoticons, print them out, like similar to the lesson that I did in the section of teaching English to younger learners. You can print them out and the students can mimic the faces. They love this, the younger students. So using something relevant like emoticons is a good idea as well. Here's another fun one, ESL Twister flashcards. You actually only need the flashcards for this one and then you can play Twister with it. Again, the whiteboard. Again, always use your whiteboard when you're in a sticky situation. Maybe you haven't done a lot of lesson planning. You have to do a demonstration and you see that the school you have to do it at they don't really have a lot of resources available, so you have to improvise. Always utilize your whiteboard. You can do activities and games on the whiteboard. You can do a run and read activity, charades, Simon Says, etc. So all you'll need then, basically the whiteboard and the different markers. Always engage the students while you're doing an activity on the whiteboard. Don't just be writing yourself. Get them to come to the whiteboard, fill in the blanks, write answers, etc. And then lastly, if you're very lucky, your school has a digital whiteboard, which is amazing. You can use this in so many different ways. As you can see here, she's putting fruit into the food pyramid, right? So these are amazing things. So you're very lucky if you have that as well. Um, there's another place where you can get a similar situation to this online. I'm going to show you guys that as well in the free resources section. So look out for that. Hand puppets is an older way to teach, still very effective and still very loved by students, especially the younger ones, the kindergartens and the pre-kindergartners. So what you can do here is Examples of use, you can use it in online teaching. Many teachers do that. Online and in classroom storytelling with the puppet. Mimic the hand puppet, right? The pronunciation or the movement of the hand puppet. And also in conversational, when the student is very shy, you can get the hand puppet out and usually gets them talking. Another thing that you can do as well is storytelling with the hand puppet. This is quite popular as well. So here you can tell a story to the entire class or you can do it online like a fairy tale, right? And most of the schools have a variety of hand puppets available. And you can get the students also involved in this process. They can be one of the hand puppets, etc., right? Other props that you can use, like bouncy balls, that sometimes gets out of hand, but it's quite fun. Plastic fruit, realia, right? Color cups, ping pong balls. I've explained the ping pong game to you guys. Hula hoops. Here are a variety of things you can use. Alright, so here are some props that you can use in your classroom. Some of these you'll also be able to use online. As you can see here, bouncy balls and cups for phonics. I'm going to explain this activity to you guys on the whiteboard now. So here also a lot of flashcards or games, snakes and ladders, 
variety that you can use in your classroom and you can just print out these games and hand it to the student. You don't actually have to have the game available to you. Alright, so let me explain this ping pong game to you guys on the whiteboard. Okay, so I've explained this game before. What you will need are a few plastic cups and you're going to write the different letters of the alphabet on the cups, like in the picture that you saw before there as well. And these are going to be used as phonic sounds. So you'll be sitting over here as the teacher on this side of the table and the students will be standing in line on the other side of the table with the ping pong ball. So they're going to roll it towards the cups and as soon as they hit one of the cups let's say they hit the one that says a on it right they have to make the phonic sound three times repeated three times right a a a and after that they go to the back of the line you can also keep score and that will make it more interesting so say if you have the students on a piece of paper with you over here and you give them points, how many that they get right, etc. So you can also make it more competitive. So I hope you get this explanation. Now in conclusion, let's quickly summarize the TPR teaching method. First of all, it's fun. It helps for faster learning of the students. It's easier and longer for retention learning. It, the focus is placed on speaking, pronunciation and language acquisition. It's fun and authentic way of teaching and a lot of teaching materials are used. You can be quite creative, although you don't need fancy resources. It's very relatable for the students. So that is the TPR method, one of the most popular methods used both in classroom for younger students and during online teaching. Thank you. Now we're going to do a little story, okay? Now, yeah. you do it with me, okay? You do it with me. Now, say hello to your mom. Hello. hello. Say hello to your mom. Hello. You are hungry. A TPR sequence is demonstrated. The children listen and do the movements accordingly. The sentences are repeated several times. In the beginning, it's important to maintain the order. The children learn to understand the meaning of the sentences with the help of mimes, gestures and drawings on the board. Doing the movements themselves is an important memory aid. Show the plum to your mum. Your mom says, <laughs> Soon, the children can make the movements on their own and in a different order. Say hello to your mom. Your mom says, Eek! <laughs> Say hello to your mom. Your mom shows you some plums. Your mom says eek. Eek. Okay. Say hello to your mom. You are hungry. Your mom shows you some plums. Cut open the plum. Show the plum to your mom. Yes. Your mom says, <laughs> Very good. Okay, you listen to the CD and 
You write the numbers. Here we go. Say hello to your mom. Hello. It's one. Two. You're hungry. The children listen to the sentences from the CD. They write the numbers by the pictures in their book. Afterwards, they compare their results. And here? Six. Six. And the last number here? Two. Two. Yes. Two.